So, hello. Let's see. Ah, oh, it works. So, my name is Bean Johansson, and I'm the community director for Nordic Innovation House Hong Kong. So, uh, my job is to scale the best of the Nordic to my market, which is the Greater Bay Area through Hong Kong. So, uh, who are we? Um, the house is sponsored by the Council of the, the Nordic Council of Ministries, and um, this is all our stakeholders. So in Hong Kong, we are backed up by the Finnish and the Swedish consulate, and in Greater Bay Area, Guangzhou, we have the Danish and the Norwegian consulate, and I work with Business Sweden, Business Finland, Business Iceland, you know, all the Nordic countries, which is Iceland, Finland, Denmark, Norway, and Sweden, me. Uh, here is the house. There's five houses in the world. We have started in Silicon Valley, 2014, New York, 2017, and the Asian houses started in Singapore, Hong Kong, and the latest one is from Tokyo. So basically, if it wasn't for this pandemic, there would be more houses in the world. But for now, we are all in surviving mode, aren't we? Yeah. So, why am I here today? Today we are going to talk about something else than scaling the Nordics to Greater Bay Area. Today I'm here with the help of Cyberport. I'm going to scale Hong Kong back to the Nordics. So, I will bring 12 Cyberport digital entertainment and games companies and bring them with me to Finland and Sweden next year. Hopefully, this time we really can go, because the projects have been postponed because of COVID. So, the project owner is FinCham, and Cyberport is the main partner. And we are very thankful for Create Hong Kong to sponsor this whole project. So, without further ado, um, the moderator already told you about who is who. So today, uh, we welcome our um, speaker and panelist. So we have um, Mr. Matti Ratti. Hey, Matti. You are a little bit. You are behind me, so it's a little bit strange. I'm looking straight forward. <laughs> and then we have uh, Peter Lübeck from Game Habitat uh, in South Sweden, and then we have Suvi Latva from Neo Games. Uh, Finland. So without, I'm not the one who was supposed to speak so much. So Suvi, what is Neo Games and what are you doing? Hey, uh, thanks for having me. It's nice to be here and it was super interesting to hear uh, NFT uh, system just before us. Just, <laughs> I wanted to thank you for the opportunity. Neo Games Finland uh, is the hub of the Finnish game industry and uh, Basically, we do uh, reports and research, and lately we have been investigating Asian markets, uh, Japan, Co Korea, uh, South Korea, and, and China. Uh, we, we used to organize trade missions. Let's see when we are able to do it again. Um, we organize networking events and take care of the uh, game communities. In Finland, game communities are really strong because we don't have a actually a domestic market, so it means that we are cooperating quite a lot between studios. So, uh, to mention studios, there is two, 200 studios, um, and I must mention also that Finland is 5.5 million countries, so it's almost like a, like a city with a thousand lakes if we compare to Asian countries. We have uh, 3,600 employees at the Finnish game industry, and the total turnover on year to, uh, 2019 was 2.4 billion in euros. Um, developers and diversity is that we have, uh, if you click next, so we have uh, quite, a, uh, quite a lot of foreigners in, in the Finnish game industry. 28% of the employees are, are non-Finnish, uh, which gives us quite a nice um, diversity also uh, regarding uh, the, the nationalities and understanding the global markets. Also, 22% of, of the employees are female. So that's also, and it's growing slowly. 
but it's growing. And um, 78 percent of the uh, employees are working in the capital area, which is the, the hotspot of, of the Finnish game industry, even though that there is a, a live clusters other other cities also. And we are trying to grow, but it, it, uh, it's a hard because there is not enough employees in Finland but, uh, available, but we are recruiting from, uh, from uh, outside of Finland and also we are putting a lot of efforts for the education and, and trying to educate uh, people what from school. What she's saying is like Hong Kong, you are welcome. There is three, 400 to 1,000 new positions, so please. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, if you might know, uh, fin Finland is a, a country of mobile, so uh, Nokia phone was, uh, to, uh, on the past, it was the Finnish creation, and, and uh, due to that, we have a really strong uh, background of mobile game development, although that Nokia is not in that uh, popularity anymore, but uh, mobile is, is the uh, primary platform, but we also have a quite solid uh, PC and console development, and, uh, and games had, that had been launched on 2020, where the number was maybe, uh, yeah, the, the really popular indie games which were uh, launched on 2020 was uh, Noita by Nolla Games. That, that's an indie game, but it was really awarded and uh, recognized. It also won the Finnish Game of the Year uh, award. And, and there has been quite a lot of uh, acquisitions also. And uh, Space Haven by, 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 by this is an, uh, one example of, of those uh, indie successful games. So it's not only like the Supercells and Rovios and, and so on, but there is also quite a nice diversity if we look for the game developers and game companies. Yes. Uh, and as I mentioned, what we do is that um, our kind of uh, purpose of Neo Games is to support the ecosystem of the Finnish game industry, make the Finland best place for game development and uh, enable a game business to, to uh, succeed. And that means that we need to nurture the uh, community, we need to nurture the uh, uh, new students and, and juniors to be able to participate, we need to attract them to the game industry. We need to uh, react what are the needs of the Finnish game companies and, and what needs to be done that the companies are able to, to make, a, make a good business. And something which is a, a buzzword, uh, buzzword at the moment is, is like a, these NFTs and so on. I think it's, it's a good uh, opportunity for cooperation with the Asian countries. Uh, I think it's something that we, we need to uh, understand and learn better. And, and it, I think that that's, that's one good opportunity for cooperation. And that's why we are Neo Games and, and helping maybe uh, building a bridge between. Sorry if I talk too long. So you see, uh, Neo Games is the association of digital entertainment and games in Finland. And um, mm. we will have, we will uh, ask Suvi later more questions. Let us go to Peter Lübeck, Game Habitat. Peter. Thank you, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Um, so, Game Habitat uh, is in some ways similar to Neo Games, um, but uh, so we're also a non-profit. We are a cluster organization or a community of game developers uh, in Sweden. We are based in Malmö in the south of Sweden, which is also very close to Copenhagen. Uh, and on this slide, you can see Malmö and Copenhagen in the distance with some of the characters from the, some of the games that are being developed here. Um, so Game Habitat also, similar to Neo Games, we, we work with attracting talent to the region, helping companies with business development. Uh, we are building sort of the brand and awareness of uh, our region as a leading game uh, cluster. Uh, and uh, here you can see some of the members that we have in our uh, community. Um, some of the biggest are Ubisoft Massive, you have King, uh, IO Interactive, um, and SharkMob, for example. Uh, and uh, I think what is uh, something that we're very proud of is that the new Star Wars game and the new Avatar game and the next James Bond game are all being made in Malmö uh, or, and or Copenhagen. And um, so we have been able to gather 
uh, a lot of talent and a lot of uh, big franchises under our sort of wing. And we also, uh, what you can see in the middle of the image there, uh, is uh, a house. Uh, so we run also a game development hub uh, called DevHub, where we've gathered uh, game companies from Indie to AAA uh, under the same roof. Uh, so we can all learn from each other and collaborate on projects. Um, so that's uh, one of the activities that we are doing. Um, and when it comes to the Swedish games industry, uh, I put Sweden and Finland on the map here, just for reference, so you can see uh, how we're located. Uh, and um, I think there are some similarities between Sweden and Finland, but there are also some, some differences. Um, our, uh, we have about 650 game companies in Sweden and about 6,500 uh, developers. And we are around 10 million people, as, uh, as a reference. And uh, 2020, we had a um, turnover of $3.8 billion. And 10 years ago, uh, it has been, I think it's been growing in the past 10 years with about 35 times. So uh, it's, um, it's been quite a, a, a big um, uh, growth for us. And some of the games that you might be more familiar with from Sweden, uh, Minecraft, of course, was mentioned in the NFT discussion earlier. Uh, also Candy Crush, I think those are two of the biggest ones. Uh, when it comes to, I think maybe Sweden is more known for uh, is AAA games, so Battlefield is one of the biggest franchises uh, in that area. Uh, but we also well, want to highlight some of the smaller uh, indie developers. So we have uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts, it was named the best Apple Arcade game in the world when Apple Arcade launched. Um, Smash Hit is a um, iOS and Android game made in Malmö uh, that has reached over 300 million people worldwide. And um, I also want to talk a bit about my friend Pedro, which is one of the latest successes from Malmö. It's made by one person uh, who basically overnight became a multimillionaire um, and uh, with, just, with this indie game that also the rights of the game have been sold to Hollywood and it's been developed uh, by the writer uh, of John Wick, uh, as an example. So I think we have a very wide range of uh, talent and creativity in terms of the, the different types of games that are being made uh, in Sweden and in our region in particular. Yeah, so Thank you. before we go, as, as, as Suvi and uh, Peter said, uh, when we say massive, King, Rovio, uh, Supercell, maybe it doesn't really cling a bell, but when you say Clash of a Clan, Angry Bird, Candy Crush, and Minecraft, then we say, aha, uh -huh, those are all Finnish and Swedish games. And now to our last speaker, uh, Matti, who is from Unity Technology, a true Nordic global company. And why is that, Matti? Hey, thank you, and um, it's very pleasure to be here uh, and, and exciting. Um, about Unity, Unity was born from gaming. Like uh, we were founded in 2004 in a beautiful town of Copenhagen in Denmark by three people, and nowadays we are around 5,000 people at Unity, uh, and uh, we have offices uh, in 45 locations around the world, and we are also today a publicly listed company with headquarters in in San Francisco nowadays. Um, Unity is world leading platform for creating and operating interactive, real-time 3D content. And our platform provides a comprehensive set of solutions to create, a, create and operate content for mobile phones, tablets, PCs, and consoles, and also augmented and virtual reality devices. And our created, create tools are responsible for some of the world's most popular games. And you can actually find Unity creators in more than one 190 countries and territories worldwide. And King was also mentioned here, so we are, we are actually proud to say that King released its first title called Built Solely on Unity in March 2021. Uh, like I said, they have made the Candy Crush and now they've released the latest Crash Bandicoot franchise, uh, Crash Bandicoot on the Run, and it was built enti entirely on Unity. And it's their first 3D mobile title and it was very ambitious and like the ambitious goals demanded that they had to be intentional about choosing the game engine and they chose unity to bring the, that beloved franchise to mobile uh, with console quality, quality graphics and, and playable and broad array of devices 
And we are also proud to say that uh, games made with Unity accounted for, se accounted for 71 percent of the top 1,000 mobile games in Q4 in 2020. So we have a game engine, but Unity helps game developers to put the games, but also uh, build successful business and, and with their games by acquiring users and, and helping studios to monetize their games. So let's talk about Unity Ads for a moment. Unity Ads is a comprehensive monetization platform for Unity, iOS, and Android developers. With it, users can easily monetize their existing player base or fuel player acquisition strategies by advertising their games across the world's largest gaming community. As of Q4 in 2020, our reported reach was 23 billion average monthly ad impressions worldwide, 2.5 billion average number of devices we reached per monthly globally, 165 million average daily users viewing, viewing ads globally and 235 average monthly installs uh, using Unity ads. So that it's a, it's a large scale, but uh, what does the success look like for, for studios that use Unity ads for their user acquisition and monetization? So let's talk about a studio called Game Jam. Uh, Game Jam is a successful game studio from Vietnam. Their challenge is to rapidly develop and successfully monetize a portfolio of hyper-casual games with a small team. And as we know, being successful in hyper-casual games it generates no easy task, and it's even more challenging when managing a large portfolio of games. There is a lot of competition from other studios, and, and uh, players can churn quickly. So this means mastering quick development cycles and, and consistently delivering new users who try monetization are keys to the success. So Game Jam launches and monetizes thousands of hyper casual games with Unity's help. Uh, they needed a quick and reliable way to in implement and manage their game economies. Uh, the ad quality and variety they get from Unity ads helps drive revenue for them, and, and uh, they also found the SDK integration easy process for both iOS and Android. Uh, it's, it's a huge time saver, time saver uh, and for them. Uh, and as Game Jam develops more hyper-casual games at accelerated pace, user acquisition is critical to drive monetization. So finding an effective user acquisition partner has been a game changer for them. In 2020, Game Jam acquired 85% of their installs for their rhythm games via Unity. Uh, and of the 15 ad partners they work with, Unity performs the best for return on advertising spend. Uh, they are also found that keeping track of UI goals for multiple games across several target countries, Asia Pacific, can, can be a lot of managed. So with, help, with the help of Unity, they, they always have easy access to understanding their campaign performance. And then lastly, uh, our performance uh, as an ad network has been recognized by major industry player. Uh, the Pocket Gamer Mobile Games Awards, uh, which is a prestigious, prestigious award uh, established to celebrate the very best uh, businesses and individuals who are driving the mobile games industry forward. We are quite excited to say that uh, Unity has won the best game engine and the best advertising and user acquisition in 2021 Pocket Gamer Mobile Gamer Games Awards. We are super pro proud of that. So Unity is born from gaming. We are proud to give you, the game developers, the best tools to create your games. And we want to help you in creating a successful business through user acquisition and monetization so you can keep creating those amazing experiences, experiences for people to enjoy. Thank you. Wow. So now you have heard a little bit from the Nordics. So just to get a little bit in the concept, the Nordic countries, we are not big. We are like the whole five countries together. We have like 26 million people. That is a Shenzhen plus a Guangzhou city, and that's it. 
and, <laughs> and uh, why are um, a country that small uh, have so much innovations? Because we are not talking about only the games. We, the Nordic countries ranks very high in all kinds of innovations. And uh, Finland and Sweden are extremely high ranked when it comes to digital entertainment and games. So, um, like we said, all this, uh, now you have heard from two organizations and one game company. I mean, Unity, three guys from Copenhagen um, started it, and now it's a company of 5,000 people and a real platform for helping other gamers to get out in the world. So why are the Swedish, the Finnish so good at games? I used to joke that um, if you have been to the Nordics, in Sweden or Finland, it is very cold, it is very dark, it is very boring. So we have to entertain ourselves, that's my story. But I don't think that is the truth. So Suvi, why are the Finns so good at um, making games? Okay, uh, it's, it's, uh, suddenly it's dark, especially now. <laughs> but um, I think that the one, one like basic layer is that we have a re really good quality and free education in Finland. So it enables people to have a, like a basic skills. And I think that in our DNA is kind of uh, engineering side. Uh, if we compare it to Sweden, they are uh, maybe in their DNA is, is marketing and we are like <laughs> engineering maybe more, I don't know. Um, oh, but also, I think there, that the me. mobile... You want to start from saying <laughs> that engineering and talents? Okay, Peter, later, let Suvi finish. <laughs> okay, and, and the other thing which is really crucial, I would say, that we, ha we had a mobile uh, hardware ecosystem. Uh, of course, we also had an Ericsson, but we had a Nokia, and that was uh, giving quite a lot of opportunities for Finnish game developers to, to develop games and mobile games, and uh, we were able to to take advantage of, of uh, new mobile uh, when iOS, actually it's, it's funny, when the competitor uh, Apple, Apple released the iOS uh, App Store, it was an advantage for the Finnish game developer or, or, or the opportunity which we were able to utilize. So I think that it, it, it's one of the things is the mobile game development and also I think that we don't have a long history of, of, of uh, games, so we don't have a burden of how it's supposed to be done, so it means that we are more agile. So I think that's my, my two cents. Okay, Peter, what do you say? I mean, there are some similarities. I think one, of course, free public education, a good social security system means that people can uh, afford to explore. I think that's very key, like for innovation in general, that you can afford to explore your creative uh, expression uh, and you know that you have something to fall back on. I think that gives a lot of freedom uh, to innovate. Uh, I also think uh, a strong history of engineering as well in Sweden has been part of it. Uh, and of course, uh, there are some similarities uh, there, if, although Finland has a, a clearly uh, stronger mobile uh, industry. Um, if you look at Sweden and some of the games that are, we are more famous for, like Battlefield and other type, like blockbuster games that I think a lot of people associate more with, with the US than, than the Nordics, uh, there are some reasons for that as well. When, when, uh, since we're such a small country, uh, the market for like, making games in Swedish is too small. Uh, and also that is the same for film. So when there was a decision way back when it's like if we were supposed to dub all the films uh, into Swedish instead of having them in their native language, in English, for example. Uh, we decided that we couldn't afford it because we're such a small country, so we didn't. That meant that all Swedes have been growing up with a lot of US uh, television and movies and all the Hollywood movies in their native language, and, and we've sort of absorbed a lot of that culture, which means that we're really good at making Hollywood-type game products then like just the, the feeling and the atmosphere of those games in combination with the ability to explore and innovate and a really strong engineering background. And I think also storytelling, I think, is key for the Nordics in general. We have a very long thousand-year history of, of storytelling uh, that 
I think all of those factors together is what makes us really good at making games. Okay, I have to and confess. And cooperation here. between Sweden and, and, and Finland. <laughs> You see, this is difficult. This is, I know we are in the new normal, but for me, this is not normal. If you are a moderator, I like to see the people I talk to, but they're behind me. And, and it's like, uh, it's a lag, so I don't even know when Suvi is done and Peter is done. But following up on Peter's, we are truly international, and that's why Unity, I mean, Matti, you are working for a Danish company, you are Finnish, and your headquarter is in the US. How do you deal? Is that really something unique Nordics? Well, I think like uh, it's, uh, it's very exciting. Like you see a global environment in, in the gaming industry and other industries. So, so I think it's, uh, you get the best of the all, all, the, all the worlds, like uh, the knowledge the Finnish game industry has and, and then the the, the business savvy environment of, of US and, and combining that, I think it makes, uh, makes a pretty successful company that Unity is. Hmm. And um, before I continue, there is the QR code. If you have any questions to the panelists or to me, uh, please start typing your questions. I see them here and I will ask as soon as the questions pop up. Okay, so um, this was not in your questionnaire, so be alert. Ah, <laughs> no, but there have been a lot of talk about metaverse. Do we see the same trend in the Nordics? What is metaverse for us? Peter? Suvi! Uh, I would like to say, uh, see, of course, every like a uh, proper game developer at these days says that metaverse and NFTs are on on their radar. So it's it's something like you need to at least say. But uh, I would say that uh, on 2000 we had a hub hotel uh, 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 created by Sulake, and it was the, uh, one of the fir first versions of metaverse. So it's not actually the new thing. It's the, just like a new layers of the things which we have already had quite a long time. And of course, uh, you Sweden, you have also uh, uh, your example of uh, Minecraft. Peter? Yeah, if I would build on that, like the, the, the metaverse thing, how, how Unity sees that, like metaverse is, is it's not going to be a one place, but, but it's, it's a several places, several different experiences. And you, well, you need this role is to help, help to build those, those experiences and those places for people to enjoy. Yeah, and I think Minecraft was also mentioned in the previous discussion um, as, a, as an example of, of co-creation. And I mean, we've seen so many examples of it being used in schools, being used in city development projects. Uh, so I think there's a lot of inspiration to to get from how Minecraft has been used in the past, I would say, 10 years. Uh, so if you're looking to expand your metaverse presence, I think it's good to start with those cases. Hub Hotel, I think, is also a good reference. So, I mean, there are some really good examples already out there of, of how to build those kind of platforms. Uh -huh. OK, we got some questions. So I'm going to do questions at the same time as my questions. So this is to Finland. Uh, is it easy to get a visa as someone from Hong Kong to work in Finland? I know. Um, okay. <laughs> no, Please, Suvi. Suvi. <laughs> I would like to say that it's, it's uh, rather easy. It's supposed to take uh, 60 days to get a, uh, get a working permission. Uh, not always in practice like that. So I don't know if you have a, uh, something else to say, but uh, that's what we are aiming to. Yeah. Six, so uh, basically days. for the audience here, uh, uh, because of the project, we have a Nordic Innovation House together with Cyberport. The Finnish um, webinar about exactly these questions will be held in the middle of January. So if you're interested in working in Finland, please join the webinar. So right now, the Finnish government is rolling out a entrepreneur visa that's supposed to fast track your um, uh, working permit in um, Finland. Exactly how, I don't know. Uh, come and uh, check the Cyberport's website. There will be a webinar about this later. 
Um, another question, uh, do you think play to earn will be the new trend of gaming industry? Play to earn, who wants to go? Hands up, I can't see you. <laughs> Suvi? Uh, I would say, I have to say that um, uh, actually Unity one, was one of the, one kind of disruption on the early days because that enabled uh, game developers to access tools, easier tools to develop games. And then we have seen free to play, uh, digital distribution, we have seen free to play as a kind of a, disruptions of, of game industry and now we have been waiting maybe five years uh, to next disruption to come and and I believe strongly that NFT a play to earn is, is a new actually the new new disruption which is going to be hopefully <laughs> and that's what we have been waiting and um, I, I, I believe uh, on, on a play uh, play to earn quite, uh, quite heavily, but it, let's see how the uh, regulation and everything is gonna, gonna affect on that. There is quite a lot of challenges also. Gentlemen, no? It's definitely going to be an interesting time, like, uh, like the change that is happening and, and uh, where it goes remains to be seen, but I think there are good and inter interesting things kind of going on there, which we are also following keenly. Peter? Yeah, I don't have anything else to add. I think that's, I think a lot of talk uh, in our community as well. People are curious. Uh, I don't see a lot of development in that area right now when I look at our members, but I think everyone is, is keeping their eyes uh, on the subject. Hmm. So this is, the next question is interesting because I'm still trying to find the answer to that. What is the success formula for Nordic's gaming industry? Can it be replicated elsewhere? Before I give the mic to the panelists, I can say that uh, I work a lot with, uh, um, I'm, I am both Nordic, I'm Swedish and Chinese at the same time. I can see a little bit difference that the replication goes, um, the, the, we always say that we put the Chinese kid in boxes, you know, and they are very good at math, they're very good at everything else, but they are not so creative. And then you get the um, Nordic kids, they're like, they are super creative, but they suck in math. So that is one of the fun things. And, I don't think that is totally true, but I think there's something in between. So can we replicate? We don't know. That is the whole point with this uh, scaling Hong Kong back to the Nordics. We want to have a talent exchange and find out because of the little I've seen here today. Sorry guys, you're not here, but the games are cool. I went I inside and was totally in AR VR world. And uh, I wish you guys were here, as you can see it. So I think there is a lot to learn from both sides. So, um, do you have any other to comment on this subject? Can it be replicated? Peter. I think uh, for the reasons I mentioned earlier, like there's so many factors that have been part of building our successful games industry. And I don't think we even know all the reasons why. I think we have been speculating for years and we've been telling the story about the engineering and the storytelling and the you know pop culture and all that and I think all of that uh, is there and it, that is hard to replicate but I think there's definitely uh, in more isolated cases like the way you work or uh, how the way we build our game education so there, there are things that we can share that can be replicated it's just I don't I think it might be hard to replicate the, all of it because I don't think it, no one has all the answers for that Mati and Sui? I, I could. Yep, Sui. Uh, I think that uh, one, one key element of, of, of course, the social security and, and, and those is in Finland is really tight community. And as Mati said, in Sweden, there is no domestic market for games or movies, uh, or at least like a, to be profitable and same in Finland. So it means that the game companies are not actually competing each other. So they are sharing quite a lot of their experiences, their contacts and, and so on. And, and that gives them like a, you don't need to learn every lesson by yourself because you can utilize the knowledge of the kind of community. The, the other thing is that I think we have in Nordics, we have a quite a flat organization uh, or like a uh, system in the companies. 
so that there is not too much like orders given by by higher uh, bosses and and so on it gives more space for creativity when you are more independent when you are able to make your own decisions it gives you more space to cr be creative when it's not so tight to be told what you're supposed to do so and no how. top down mm. Mm. yeah so welcome to Hong Kong and China. <laughs> so the next question, as an expert in the industry, do you think that metaverse can be used elsewhere else than in entertainment? Ooh, that was a difficult one. Matty, you seem like, like you have something. It depends, like how, how, do you, how, how do you define, define metaverse, but I think it, it can be many things to many people, but one could see a future where you actually that you are you are entertained, you you, but then you could work in the metaverse. You you could kind of do your purchases. You could go and enjoy movies with your friends and do all different kind of things. So it's uh, I think it depends like how do you define that, and if you define it very broadly, like it, it will be more than entertainment. It will be more that we we work there, we spend our time there with our friends and all that. Oh, oh, next you can questions. Get married. Guys, in there. Next questions. Yes. Only one minute each because I know that Peter and Suvi can talk about it all day long. We have heard about games backed by companies, but for Neo Games and Game Habitat, is there anything in particular that is being done to support the indie developers? One minute each. We start with you, Suvi. <laughs> <laughs> See, I know that Peter is okay, like, me, we, me, we have me. Been, <laughs> we have been supporting the Finnish game jam, and, and that's a place to uh, like, uh, uh, create games without uh, financial or, or business an, uh, angel at all. So you can focus only th on creativity and uh, execution. So I think that's, that's a quite a good uh, uh, thing. Also, we have been al always like allowing not only big uh, growth companies, but uh, supporting also indie developers. But that's not too much you can do, actually. It's just enable, but not to do for indie developers, I would say. Yeah, I think um, for us, it, 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 like Sue was talking about as well, it's about community and sharing. And uh, I think the main thing that Game Habitat offers is a, a community to share and uh, collaborate and hang out in. Uh, one of the first things that we started doing was game developer meetups, uh, where we just any developer can come and hang out after work. And the first time we did it was maybe 50 people came. Now, the last time we did it before the pandemic, we had 400 developers coming to the same venue, talking, sharing. Uh, I think that's one key thing. Um, we also have a whole house of developers, where we have everything from indie to AAA in the same house. We do events in that house. That means that anyone who's inter interested in game development can come to us meet other developers and share things. Um, and I think a, a key thing that a lot of people ask me, okay, but how can you have 25 game companies in the same house? What about all the trade secrets? And the fact is that the whole house is just glass panels. You can go and you can look into any game studio there and see how they work. And there's no secrets anywhere. People are just sharing, they're working on projects together. Uh, and I think that is a really key aspect of, of our uh, success, uh, definitely, like Suvi mentioned. This is too short. Now we get warm and uh, we could talk more about this. We only have like two minutes left, so I have to wrap up. And before I wrap up, Peter, what's behind me? Why do I have this slide? <laughs> so what you're seeing there is uh, from the Nordic Game Conference. Uh, it's definitely one of the leading game conferences in Europe. And I think people in our community usually talk about it like the friendliest game conference. The, the one where you come back year after year after year to meet with your, your friends and your colleagues and your peers in the industry. Um, I think it's one of the, I mean, it's the best opportunity to interact with the Nordic game industry for sure. But I mean, it, it's not only the Nordics who, who gather there, it's people from all over the world. Uh, and it was started in 2004, so it's one of the longest running game conferences as well. Um, and hopefully it's going to be back IRL in May uh, in Malmo next year. We've been doing it digitally for the past uh, couple of years. Um, but uh, not only it's a great opportunity to come and interact with the Nordic industry, but it's also an opportunity to visit Malmo, visit Game Habitat, and, and uh, you know, maybe visit some of our member studios 
Uh, we usually do a studio tour where we take a bus around the city and go to Massive and look at the studios making Avatar and Star Wars, and we go to King, and looking at the See? Candy Crush studio, and Peter, you can get sort told, of an I idea told, of I've told uh, them how, that you will not uh, stop talking if I give you the mic. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's time's <laughs> up. So before I leave the podium, I just want to let you know the reason this photo is behind me is for the next um, thing here in Cyberport. We are bringing 12 companies uh, to um, Finland and Sweden next year. We are supposed to go, the delegation was supposed to go in the middle of March. Not going to happen because of the new Omicron. So now we are really trying to get Hong Kong to Finland and Sweden to Nordic Games by the end of May. So I give back the podium to our um, MC and um, you will see who they are. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank Kitus you. and uh, Thank you. Peter. Thank you. 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 Thank you.